Welcome to the Psych Central Show, where each episode presents an in-depth look at issues from the field of psychology and mental health, with host Gabe Howard and co-host Vincent M. Wales. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Psych Central Show podcast. My name is Gabe Howard, and with me, as always, is Vincent M. Wales. And before we get to our guest, who has a really cool app called Happy, uh, we want to tell you about a great podcast from our fellow podcaster, Paul Gilmartin. It's called The Mental Illness Happy Hour, which is really one of the names that we should have used for our show, uh, but we kind of had to go with the branding on that one. His show is geared toward anyone interested in or affected by depression, addiction, and other mental challenges. Paul has interviewed Andy Kindler from Everybody Loves Raymond, Paul Rust from the Netflix show Love, Maria Banford from the Netflix original Lady Dynamite, just check out the podcast. It's Mental Illness Happy Hour. You can listen in at mentalpod.com or any of your favorite podcast players. And he's been on our show. He's totally been on our show. Probably one of the coolest guests that we've ever had. So now let's talk to Jeremy Fishback. Now he is one of the founders and creators of an app called Happy. Jeremy, welcome to the show. How you doing, Gabe? Very nice to be on the show and uh, grateful for the opportunity. Oh, we're glad that you could be here. So we try not to ask open-ended questions, but the app is called Happy. So what is Happy? And we're talking about the app. You had to clarify. Yeah. I had to clarify. I didn't want to get into an existential crisis on the podcast. So specifically, what is the app Happy? Happy is an app that offers emotional support, which is a critical component of mental health, on demand from some of the most compassionate people in the country. It's available 24 seven. You literally hit a button and you're connected to somebody who's extremely good at giving support, who's been vetted by us. And uh, yeah, I can get into a lot of other details of it. There's a lot of data-driven components, but the big idea is that for most people, most of the support we get in life is from our family and friends. Uh, obviously, some of us also get support from traditional mental health professionals, but for, for most people, most of the support we get is from family and friends, and for most people, our support networks from, have holes in them, are, are not actually very reliable, and, and really the goal of HAPPY is to help people recreate networks of People like their friends and family, musicians, writers, painters, teachers, mothers, fathers, who happen to be available whenever we need them, who are extremely good at supporting us, and who we don't care about in quite the same way we care about our, our own friends and family, so we're not inhibited from seeking support from them. Would I be wrong in saying that one of the benefits of this app is that you don't have to feed it and clean up after it like you would an emotional support animal. <laughs> Correct. Uh, for, for, for now, <laughs> that, that happens to, to not be a feature of happy. No, 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 no cleanup. You hit a button, you get a lot of support, compassion, encouragement, and, uh, and that's it. Gabe's going to make me cut this from the show, I'm certain. Oh, no, no. We're absolutely <laughs> beating it in. Support animals are big. My question is... Specifically, I, I know that somebody, I, I live with bipolar disorder. Anybody who's a longtime listener of the show knows this. And when I was really, really sick, I really felt like I was a burden to my friends and family because I needed a lot of help, a lot of encouragement. I wanted to talk about it a lot because it was a, it was, well, it was a really, really big thing in my life. This app obviously wasn't available then because smartphones didn't exist. But I, I sort of felt like my friends and family, every time I would show up, they were like, oh God, are we going to get the Gabe who wants to talk about the latest movie? Or are we going to get the Gabe who wants to talk about his diagnosis for the 37th time? Would this app help kind of take the pressure off of our friends and family so that we can be more present with the good stuff in our relationships and shift it over to a stranger? That's a great question. We, you know, you could say stranger. We would just say somebody you haven't met with, connected with yet. But, but you're right. It's very hard to get support from our family and friends for, for a lot of reasons. It's actually the same reason why very hard for our own friends and family to get support from us. And we just skimmed through those reasons. You, you highlighted uh, a major one, but, but we would say in no particular order, you know, our friends and family 
simply aren't available when, when, when we need them. Number two, a lot of our friends and family simply aren't good at giving support. When I was going through the end of a relationship, I heard a lot of, I told you not to get into a relationship with that woman. Um, yeah. that, that's great. That's also not, not at all what I was looking for. And then, as you said, you know, third, we, we care about our friends and family more than anyone else on earth. So they're the people we least want to burden with our, with our problems. Um, there's a lot of other reasons why it's hard to get support from family and friends, but you know, Gabe, I'm sure in the reverse that there may be certain people who you love who have reached out to you time and time again about the same thing. And after a while, it can be really hard to keep supporting the same person, certainly for the same issue. But when you burn out, that person should still be able to seek support from someone, right? And exactly. that's what we're trying to ensure. One of the things that this kind of reminds me of is in, in the mental illness space, we have something called a peer supporter. It's kind of all based on the idea that, you know, I, I live with a bipolar disorder. So I would be a great peer supporter to somebody else who was living with bipolar disorder because we have that shared experience. Is, is, does happy kind of match people who would have the shared experience? Like, for example, somebody going through grief would it match somebody else who understands grief and is maybe good at giving support in, in that uh, sphere or kind of how does the matching process work? I think your intuition is right that in some cases, it really does help for, the, for our givers and, and callers to have shared experiences. Interestingly, sometimes the data show the opposite for us, that, that having identical experiences can be a bad thing. And I'll give you a specific example. If you and I, Gabe, were both going through a divorce, let's say, and, and you said to me, you know, I'm going through a divorce. It's, it's kind of messy. We've got a kid, um, some shared property. You know, there's a lot of ways that I could relate my own experiences to you, which would not sound good to you. So one, I could say, well, you think you have it bad. I've got three or four kids. And for various reasons, it's a lot more complicated than what you're going through. And that's going to leave you feeling like, okay, I guess maybe I shouldn't feel so yeah, bad about it, this. Or it's not a contest. Right. It's not a contest or it could be it, very true. Exactly. It's, it, or, or I haven't gone some, or I haven't gone through something nearly that bad. I've just, I've gone through a very, you know, easy divorce. And I say, wow, like, what you're going through is, is that that sounds pretty bad. So the, the the point is what we use to to dictate matches is is data. You know, we put givers through a very long vetting process to ensure that statistically speaking, they are exceptional at giving support compared to the rest of the population. And beyond that, we let callers decide through ratings on calls and through a system of favoriting who they actually want to speak to. And that may be somebody who has gone through a very similar life experience with them. It may be somebody who hasn't. What really interests me is the idea that people through this app may be more than finding people with the exact same life experiences, kind of filling holes in their own social networks. Uh, a, a young caller may, may find you know a lot of support and a deep connection with a much older caller who reminds her of a grandparent she may not have anymore or she may really connect to a guy on the app who you know serves the role of almost a brother that she never had and this isn't something that we've pinpointed with data but i think that that to, to us is as likely to occur as people going on seeking through favoriting people who have experienced just the exact same things that they have. That's a great explanation. It, it makes a lot more sense to me now than what I was thinking of earlier. Um, I like the rating system that you mentioned. It, it's very reminiscent of a lot of other websites and whatnot where we're you know, rating sellers and, and, and guests and things like that. So that's pretty cool. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. 
secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face -face session. Go to betterhelp.com forward slash psych central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. Betterhelp.com forward slash psych central. One of the things that I wonder about, though, is there are a lot of people out there who don't seem to understand just how important emotional support is. Uh, Gabe mentioned earlier that, you know, he felt like he was burdening people, but there are other people who I think seem to regard it as being a weakness in needing this. And, and do you talk about that at all? Absolutely. Yeah. So, there's a few ways to describe the importance of emotional support. And if your listeners get nothing else out of our conversation, I hope they get, they, they walk away with this. One way to understand emotional support is just, first of all, what it is. And then we would define it as mostly undivided attention, but also compassion and encouragement. Another point to make is that on our hierarchy of needs that a lot of people are familiar with, it comes right after water and food. So we have a set of survival needs where if even for a few days, we don't have water, let's say, where our life is in danger. So emotional support isn't quite there, but right after water and food, it's the highest thing in our, in our hierarchy of needs in terms of the physical health problems we develop when we don't have it. And another way to, to look at emotional support is that it's, for most people, the foundation of, of mental health. And, and, and the final thing to note, to really understand this, because I think part of the reason people don't appreciate the importance of emotional support is that they don't understand exactly what it is and why these components are important to us. I would focus on the foundation of emotional support, which is undivided attention. And when we give somebody undivided attention, we're giving them two things, our time and our focus. Why is that important? Time is the currency of life. So we give somebody our time, we're literally giving them a piece of our life. And our focus tells them there's no one more important than them. And this combination of time and focus is the most powerful demonstration that you care about another person. And for them, it's the most convincing evidence that they matter. And, and finally, you could ask, why does it matter that we matter? Well, when we don't feel like we matter, and much of the country right now doesn't, the first thing we do is we stop taking care of ourselves. When I was going through the end of a relationship a couple of years ago, as soon as I, I, I moved out, the house where I was living, I started smoking, started drinking, and I literally thought to myself, who cares if I get lung cancer? Uh, who cares what happens to me in general? And that was just from my body processing a deficit of undivided attention. And the next thing that happens is we stop taking care of other people. So we, we believe at Happy, there's a lot of research to support this, that there is a massive epidemic of emotional support in this country, uh, largely through the fact that we're spending trillions of hours on social media, not one of which, um, in most cases, are we giving somebody undivided attention? Are we getting it ourselves? So there's really a massive epidemic of people feeling like they don't matter. It, it, it's, it's a really serious issue. I, I can certainly relate to that. And I think many, many people can, especially when something happens, you know, the, the loss of a relationship, the loss of a loved one, uh, re retirement, you know, children moving out of the house. I mean, there's just, there's lots of things that happen to us in our lives that have happened to so many people that the people around us are just like, well, what, you think you're the first person to ever break up with somebody, so therefore they're not going to help you. But, you know, the reality is, is that's when you need the help the most. And it sounds like that's one of the things that, that happy targets. And I like what you said about when somebody gives you their time, it, it really doesn't matter if they're effective or ineffective. And, and that's a very poor choice of words. It's the fact that they're trying to help you 
makes you feel important and you can work together to find resolutions that work for you. Is that a fair statement? I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, I think that's, I think it's exactly right. I mean, I, I think that in the, in, in the years to come, the hardest thing to find, the, the scarcest resource on the earth is going to be another person's time. Really another person who's there to listen to you, who's actually going to drop what they're doing, including smartphone, to listen to you. And, and you're right. It's really just knowing that another person is willing to make that sacrifice for you that gives you the sensation that you matter, that gives you the, the motivation to plow ahead with your personal endeavors and your relationships. And you're also right that there are these peculiar transitions in life. There are many of them. We all go through them where we simultaneously need more support and have less of it. You know, when you go to college, that can be tough, especially in the beginning, but your friends and family typically aren't there. If you're like many students who have gone away for college or you're a parent, this is the most, one of the most common things to happen to us. And the person who was giving us support and this is a very difficult time for a lot of people, is now hopefully giving it to your child and not to you. So you're exactly right, Gabe, that we, we need support, not because we're going through very unusual circumstances, crises, et cetera. We need support because we're going through life and, and life can be tough. So Jeremy, how does happy make money? First calls now are completely free giving out hundreds, hopefully thousands of hours of, of free support. And that's however long you want to talk. We had an eight hour call the other day. And after that, it's $12 for 30 minutes prorated. So you could stay on the phone for 15 minutes before an exam and it would be five or $6. Um, ultimately, we would like it to be completely free or at least have insurance companies and, uh, and employers paying for it. We're, we're meeting with a lot of um, companies that want to offer happy as a workplace benefit. So our goal is, even though we think this is extremely valuable, one of the, one of the things, if you're going to pay for anything in life, this may be right at the top of the things that you'd want to pay for if you want to be physically healthy. We, we would like to keep costs as low as possible that's, so people can access as much of this as possible. But for now, you could think of it like same justification you would use to pay for some healthy food. It's very good for you. It's a worthwhile investment. Nevertheless, we're trying to keep costs um, as low as possible. Well, thank you very much. We, are, we're, we know that our listeners are always curious about that. So let's talk about how this works specifically. So I, I've got my smartphone here. I, I go over to my, my app store or Google Play or, and I download the app. So now I've got Happy on my phone. It's all downloaded. I press the button. What's the first thing that I'm going to see? This is your first call. Um, and without entering a credit card or anything else, you're going to be able to hit a button and hear a voice, and it's going to be somebody who uh, is extremely good at giving support and wants to support you, and they're just going to ask you what's happening. And you can indicate beforehand any specific issue that's on your mind. You don't have to. And then at the end of the call, and that may last 15 minutes for you, it could last eight hours, you're going to get a chance to rate the giver. You're going to get a chance to favor the giver. The result of that would be when you call in again, you'll get preferentially routed to that giver. And, and as I said, our goal is over time not for you to find that perfect other person. That's the only person you're connecting with, but rather to help you build up a group of five or 10 givers who are probably unlike your family and friends, always available for you, at least one of them and who are exceptional at supporting you probably in different ways, giving you different perspectives. And yeah, who you don't care about in the way you care about your family and friends, so you're not inhibited at all from reaching out. So Jeremy, do the, do the givers, do, do they make any money off of the, the payments? Yeah, so, so givers earn $15 an hour prorated. And for many of them, it's, it's a critical source of, 
um, of income. Some of our givers are are blind, are, are physically disabled, have a hard time leaving uh, leaving their home to work. Others are able-bodied and, and have other jobs, and this is just something that they they really enjoy doing. And what what sort of is, you know they're they're from all walks of life. Ninety or over ninety percent are women, but but other than that, the the, the common bond between them is that they are extremely good at giving support and and really enjoy doing it. A lot of our givers don't need this money just to wrap up that part of the conversation and have asked us if they can donate proceeds of calls internally to help fund calls for people who can't even afford these rates. So that's a feature that um, down the road we're going to be building in. I think that's a really great feature and, and one that would help a lot of people. How does one apply to be a giver and how do you screen them? You know, one of the things that you said is that, you know, your givers are really good at giving support. So obviously you have to have a, a way to, to know that. So what's, what's kind of the process? So I decide, hey, I want to be a giver, go. So we, we were faced with that question two years ago and we set out to recruit the most compassionate people in the country. So what we did was we, we worked with mental health professionals and a lot of other people with expertise in this area to develop a screen for emotional intelligence. We, we talk a lot in this country and focus a lot on standard or traditional intelligence. Uh, we don't talk a lot about uh, emotional intelligence. If I ask you, Gabe, who is the most intelligent person you know, or just name the people who you would assume have very high IQs, you wouldn't even think about people with high emotional intelligence or exceptional emotional intelligence. So that's what we focused on. And we broke down this ability to give support into six different metrics and through a series of 30 to 60 minute interviews. Anybody who scored uh, really in the 90th percentile and up on all these measures got through to a process where they got additional feedback assessments. We've developed pretty extensive guidelines on how to give emotional support effectively. So givers are assessed on these guidelines and then we do background checks. When they get through this process, what we are confident of is that compared to the rest of the population, they are statistically speaking, exceptional at giving support. After that, we use data to let, as, uh, as we discussed, callers decide who they um, prefer to talk to. But that's, that's the process. I really like what you said about the difference between intelligence and emotional intelligence. And Vin and I recently did a show called uh, Gabe and Vin Save the World, probably, or probably not. We never really did resolve it. But one of the things that we talked about is, okay, we've got to find 36 people, and they're going to be the group of people that save the world. And at first, you know, as for those who have listened to the show... We said, well, we're just going to go out and find the 32 smartest people we can find. <laughs> Clearly, they have something to offer. And then I realized that, well, you know, my dad, he's, he's going to get cut immediately. Uh, he's not on anybody's top 10 list of most intelligent people. But emotional intelligence, you know, my, my dad's up there. I mean, he's supportive. He's a cheerleader. He's helpful. He's probably one of the most stable, well-balanced guys I know, especially in a crisis. So what we came to the conclusion of is, while he may not be the smartest guy in the room, he's probably going to be one of the most calm and positive people in the room. And that's needed, especially for things like this. And that's when Vin and I really realized the difference between being really intelligent, you know, book smart, et cetera, uh, and being emotionally stable. And, you know, it, it, was a, it was a great moment. And you're right. I probably don't want to talk to somebody on the phone who is really, really intelligent, uh, but you know, makes me panic or freaks me out or doesn't understand what I'm going through, even though they might be able to figure out what the heck pi is, you know, the mathematical version, not the eating kind. Sure. And I, I would just, um, you know, not challenge you, but kind of push back on one point, which is that you say your dad may not be the smartest person or most intelligent. And I would just say, it really depends on, on your definitions of those terms. And what I would say about our givers is that they're extremely intelligent about people. And if I were trying to save the world, I think I'd want 
people who not only really understood human beings, but were inherently compassionate and whose instinct was to support other people and to encourage them to fulfill their potential. When you get done describing what emotional intelligence means, you realize that it is emotionally intelligent parents who raise their their kids really well. It's emotionally intelligent people who have successful relationships and who you know, are, are likely to look out for the other people in society who aren't doing as well. And you start to think for me that, wow, we need many more people who are scoring high on emotional intelligence. And as a society, we need to value it much more. These are the people who should be on the fronts of our magazines. That's, that's our position. I, I, I like that very much. And just so everybody knows, Vin and I did decide to keep my father. The rest of my family got cut. My wife is still <laughs> angry about that. <laughs> well, you got, you got plenty of time to, to make up for that, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I would like to meet your dad. You should tell him to, to go to the website, sign up for an interview, and we won't give him any uh, preferential treatment, but uh, he sounds like somebody who's going to get through the process uh, on his own merits. He's a, he's a pretty interesting guy. I, I, again, my mother, if she's listening to this, she's going to be like, no, he complains constantly. He's always hot. His feet always <laughs> hurt. Yeah, he, he's that guy. But yeah, in general, everybody likes him. I, I think I take after him in that way. Jeremy, I, I can't believe that we've ran out of time. Th- this, is, this was great. We learned a lot. Tell us where we can find the app. Is, it, is the Happy app available in all the app stores? What's the website? So the, the website is, happytheapp.io and right now it's available on iPhones and iPads so check it out on the App Store you can just search for happy space the space app and soon um, it's going to be available on on Androids as well we're in the middle of that process for for now iPhones and iPads and and entirely free first calls and I hope some of your listeners check it out, um, even if they're just curious. I imagine that some of them will. Jeremy, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for teaching us about emotional intelligence and about Happy the App and for connecting with us for the last half hour. We really appreciate it. Yes, thanks. It's been an honor. You guys are great. I've been a fan for a long time and um, extremely grateful for this opportunity and keep up the great work. Uh, we, we absolutely will. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And remember, you can get one week of convenient, affordable, private online counseling absolutely free anytime, anywhere by visiting betterhelp.com slash psych central. Everybody, we will see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Psych Central Show. Please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you found this podcast. We encourage you to share our show on social media and with friends and family. Previous episodes can be found at psychcentral.com slash show. Psychcentral.com is the internet's oldest and largest independent mental health website. Psychcentral is overseen by Dr. John Grohall, a mental health expert and one of the pioneering leaders in online mental health. Our host, Gabe Howard, is an award-winning writer and speaker who travels nationally. You can find more information on Gabe at GabeHoward.com. Our co-host, Vincent M. Wales, is a trained suicide prevention crisis counselor and author of several award-winning speculative fiction novels. You can learn more about Vincent at VincentMWales.com. If you have feedback about the show, please email TalkBack at PsychCentral.com.